Um, so we have Elizabeth coming up. I'm really excited about her talk. Definitely make sure you tune in. It's going to be very important um, and uh, potentially life changing. So Elizabeth, come on up, my dear. Woo! Emac. inside the womb to externally, wrapping around my abdomen. And when I ovulated, it was just like a vice. It was absolutely horrible. I also got severe migraines and other issues. And they tried everything, right? So uh, hormones, birth control period, uh, uh, pills, uh, eventually Lupron in injections, uh, medicines for the migraines, giving myself Imitrex shots. They were so bad, I'd have to pull over on the side of the road and, and vomit because I was having such issues, right? And it didn't work. And 1994 was a bad year for me. <laughs> I ended up having three surgeries. The first one was impingement syndrome in my shoulder. It was the first surgery that was botched. Uh, I, I couldn't move my right arm. I was a tennis player all through high school, but at that time I was a nurse. Uh, 1986 to 1996, I was an RN in hospitals. And uh, I was injured uh, working with a patient. So I had that surgery. Then I had knee and fun application to correct some uh, issues in my stomach because I had such severe GERD, also tied to probably what was going on with endometriosis, and then, then the, the hysterectomy at the end of the year. And you know, it, and it was 20 years of hell ever since then that I had a lot of medical issues, all starting from that very unfortunate year. And nobody ever asked me what was going on with me, right? I had just bought a house. The house rained, it rained and, and the roof leaked, and next thing you know, I'm spending another 20 grand fixing the house, and then I decided I wanted, I, I was done being a nurse, I wanted to go back to school. So I enrolled in a, 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 an MBA in healthcare administration program. So I was working full time, going to school full time. It was a bad year, <laughs> and medically I broke down. Um, and that's what happened. And so, but this happens to, to millions of women, right? How many people have endometriosis? One out of 10 women. And what are the symptoms? Uh, irregular growths, pain, spasms, heavy bleeding, uh, painful sex, uh, all kinds of other issues. Uh, and again, the, the, the treatments are drugs, pain medication, surgeries, which can be futile because the, the growth will reoccur. It's sort of like guacamole. You take them out and, and now you've got more problems. On the other end of the reproductive cycle uh, is menopause. And we're all going to get there. <laughs> Level 56 myself. <laughs> but one, one in four of us have severe hot flashes right? and night sweats. One in two experience weight gain, uh, insomnia, headaches, really bad ones. Uh, and this goes on and on for 10 years. Uh, dryness, lack of desire, uh, risk of osteoporosis. So what do these women end up with at the other end of the spectrum? Right? Antidepressants. And pain medications, ANSAIDs, Motrin, uh, medications for sleep, Lunesta, Ambien, etc. Right, and of course Premarin uh, and, and hormones and, and that sort of thing. So, but these treatments again are a band-aid, and many of these women are, are really rethinking this. Do I really want to take hormone replacement therapy? Do I risk breast cancer? Do I risk other things? Right, and so as a clinician, I, I today I've dedicated my life to bridging conventional and cannabis therapeutics, because this is what I use to heal myself. See, 19, or 2014, I had a bicycle accident, crashed my bike, went out on leave uh, to have surgery. I was running sales at Anthem Blue Cross. So, you know, I spent, <laughs> once I got my MBA, I was in uh, clinical operations, then general operations, Great American Health Net, Pacific Care, United Health Group, Warner Pacific, <laughs> and the Blue Cross, and my last job was uh, sales executive for the County of San Diego Employee Benefits. So I'm implementing Obamacare, everything's going really well. You, you remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I crashed my bike, I went out on leave to have surgery. On purpose. <laughs> Somebody introduced me to CBD through a topical massage at the chiropractor. And next thing you know, this same woman is like, you've got to take this internally. 
we're going to work with you. The next thing you know, working with her and her boyfriend in San Diego at a pop-up dispensary, and the doctor writing recommendations, and I'm like, hey, this is something new I can do. I need a life change. I was 48 years old or so, and I'm like, what else can I do? So I was a nurse for 10 years, used my MBA, and worked with all of you for 20 years. The last seven years, I've dedicated myself to returning to medicine and doing this. And so now I teach people about the endocannabinoid system. What is the endocannabinoid system? We have a two-way master regulatory communication system that brings us to homeostasis at the cellular level. It's a very fascinating thing. It was discovered partly in 1964. Raphael Meshulam in uh, Israel synthesized and isolated THC, took the molecular structure. 20 years later, they put it into the body with radioactive imaging. We light up like a Christmas tree. Why are we hardwired for this plant? This is when we found the endogenous cannabinoid system. We have receptors all over our body that are tagged to these compounds because we're making something endogenously that activates these receptors. Cannabinoid receptor 1, CB1, brain central channel. Uh, cannabinoid receptor 2 in our, our immune system, periphery. And all of them bring back balance. Anandamide, discovered in 1992, uh, is our first endocannabinoid, and basically these are manufactured on demand in response to stress as the body is detecting it's not well, and they activate the uh, communication restoration. So think about the two cells, A and B, they have to communicate well, we want things to flow nice, uh, and that's what we do. So when, but like any system, you can get an endocannabinoid system deficiency, and we break down by poor lifestyle things, some genes, but just like any conditions, one out of 10 of us have true genetic issues, a lot of them are lifestyle caused. And it just turns out that uh, keeping the system toned is what you do when you do healthy things. Really great nutrient dense food, exercise, stimulates the endocannabinoid system, getting this going all the time, managing stress, sleeping well, that sort of thing. How many of us are doing that? <laughs> How many of us have a lack of connection and, and trouble with vulnerability and speaking up and setting boundaries when we're where we need them? All of that keeps us sick. Well, if we bring in the phytocannabinoids, luckily nature knows best. We can supplement with these vital nutrients, these compounds, they're essential fatty acids. Through ingestion, we should be putting these into our body on a daily basis. They used to be in the grain, and we used to uh, uh, graze the uh, animals on, on this until 1937 when they prohibited the plant, took it out of the supply, and we started getting sick. So now we can supplement. So when we think about cannabis and CBD medicines, why does it work in the body? Because these can activate these same receptors, bringing us back into balance. So supplementing with these phytonutrients can optimize your own endocannabinoid system to work again, and uh, it's just like taking supplements. So, a river runs through it. Every single physiology in your body is affected by this. It's so the brain and the central nervous system, digestion, your immune system, all of your systems. So when you put compounds into the body and they flow through systemically, they can activate all of these different receptors to bring us back into balance. And you can see cell A, cell B transmission. The endocannabinoids float back and activate those receptors to bring us back to balance. So when we saturate these receptors, we can have uh, better health. Receptors are highly expressed in the women's reproductive system. It's one of the places that we have uh, very rich uh, uh, receptor co uh, content. Activate these receptors with CBD. Think about a, a tincture, maybe 50 milligrams a day, divided doses, uh, can be a potent anti-inflammatory. Uh, CBD is almost more anti-inflammatory than uh, Motrin. It activates the same COX-2 enzymes, inhibiting the uh, reaction and slowing down cytokines. So it can slow down the inflammation, the pain, the swelling, etc. In menopause, we can use uh, CBD also as an anti-anxiety agent. Uh, it activates 5-HT, helping you make serotonin in your body, keeping you nice and calm, sleeping better, uh, feeling relaxed, more grounded, more agency. I'm able to, to cope with this. Uh, it aids digestion. And, and here's other phytocannabinoids you can buy in tinctures. CBD, CBG, CBN. You can use them differently for different ways. And uh, we can uh, teach people how to use all of this. And then microdoses of THC can help lower body temperature for those that are having hot flashes. Five milligram edible at bedtime is going to help you fall asleep, stay asleep. Uh, topicals, putting them on the abdomen and the pelvis, giving you nice localized comfort. Some people use patches. And inhaling THC, maybe. 
uh, before intimacy. Lowers some of your inhibitions, helps connection, promotes a, a, a good sense of touch. And across the board, women are using cannabinoids to uh, mitigate some of the symptoms of uh, menopause and, and uh, irritability, mood swings, headaches, bloating, cramping, back pain. All of that can be mitigated. And this is a Project CBD uh, uh, study only using CBD. So we're not even using uh, THC here right now. And projectcbd.org is one of my favorite repositories of information. All of the studies that are going on in cannabinoid therapeutics are linked to there. So you can read some of that. And one of the best things, you know, as a clinician, as somebody that understands healthcare, right, and cannabis therapeutics and, uh, and, and where we are today in, in healthcare, under, uh, explaining these benefit structures, imagine if you're thinking about the pills and, and the polypharmacy, thinking about even just with respect to women's health, all the, the HRT, the benzodiazepines, the antidepressants, we can reduce some of those, we can reduce uh, some of the pain pills that our people are taking, uh, and we can uh, lower inf inflammation. Uh, cannabinoids are immunomodular, so they can help uh, strike up the immune system and they can bring it down. And generally we want to bring it down. So when we're using cannabinoids, think about uh, immunosuppressive, just think about the biologics. Think about those ads you're watching on TV at the nightly news where you've got all of those side effects. There could be a more benign option. Uh, GI issues and digestion, emotional issues. We talk about PTSD. Uh, I'm using uh, cannabinoids to treat veterans with PTSD. Very, very severe issues uh, where we're dealing with um, uh, all of the, the, the rage and the outbursts and the, the, the mismanagement of life because of what's going on, the hypervigilance. Cannabinoids can get into the brain, tap down the amygdala, uh, soften the fight or flight, work on the hippocampus in, in the aversive memories and helping to restore sleep and a sense of calm being able to reduce some of the polypharmacy. And it's amazing to see this energy, metabolism, uh, uh, all of the different types of uh, sleep. We can restore uh, sleep cycles, which again, if you can get people sleeping, that's the number one thing that you want for, uh, for health. And you know, women's health, suppositories, everything's on the table. We have uh, some medicines now that are available for you. But you're not just taking care of you, right? Uh, you know, I always think about where women are in the, in the pendulum of caregiving and taking care of the family, right? You are the mothers and aunts, the children that develop autism and epilepsy and some of the conditions that cannabinoids can modulate to bring back balance neurologically. Pediatric cancers. You're the daughters and, and, and extended family members so people that are struggling with Parkinson's and MS and Alzheimer's and dementias. You have clients that are on opiates dealing with chronic pain issues and addiction based on failed surgical procedures and living with them. And cannabinoids can help all of them because they all stem from a lack of communication in the first place. So if we can restore communication at the cellular level, we can maybe restore some of these. And care for yourself first. I always say, you know, this is something that is so safe, it's a natural therapeutic option. Your, rec your body recognizes it. It's all about trying to understand what good quality is and how to use them properly, that is the dance that we teach people. So, and then, but one of what I always say is that it's not just the cannabinoids, it's not just the pharmaceuticals. You can't just say, you know, the pills and procedures are gonna save you, no. You're, you're gonna talk in life with style medicines and, and we have to here. Um, and so body, mind, spirit alignment, you know, happens when you're literally, your body's running on all cylinders, you're healing well from, from injuries, you're sleeping well, you feel no lack or limitation, you're completely loved as you are. Now, I tell people that I'm starting to work with, let's reverse the order, because sometimes we need to. We start with spirit. Spirit is love, self-love. If you take self-love, now you've got inherent motivation that's going to help you make those lifestyle changes and recommit to slowing down and listening to what your body intuitively needs. How many people are really doing this? And conventional care doesn't approach it this way. But you have all you need to heal. Your body is a masterpiece of intelligent design, and it will rectify itself if given the proper conditions. Right? And so I break it down into digestible bites. What do we need to add? Lifestyle, uh, nutrition, uh, exercise, connection, prayer, uh, speaking up. What do we need to remove? Pharmaceuticals that don't work, fast food, uh, running ourselves ragged and not, uh, not uh, putting a, a premium on sleep. Right? And then, so you apply values-based help. I teach people all the time, where do we start? So one of the things I learned from a, a workshop a couple of years ago called the Passion Test. 
writing down the top 20 goals and desires and values of my life. Right? Then I look at what that list is. Pair that down to 10. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now pair it down to five. And what are your top five goals? How do you want to live your life? What's important to you? My top five goals became one, a vibrant, healthy body. I was sick for 20 years. I had that shoulder thing put me on Motrin and, and muscle relaxants. That gave me high blood pressure. That gave me stomach issues. I was on all of these medications. I was sick for too long. I wanted a body that worked. I wanted professional success. I've always needed that. We all want to, to, to do well and to be admired. But you know, I, what do I need to do for that? A relationship with the love of my life. Prosperity and abundance and balance and time to enjoy it. So this, once I had this list, it simplified everything. It clarified everything. It helped me change my behaviors so that I could then live up to what I set as the pinnacle of health. Do I really want another cookie or glass of wine? Or do I really want to go out with a friend instead of doing my work? Do I really want to shop for things I don't need? Do I really, you know, et cetera? How do I find balance? And when I got the spiritual strength, and when I teach others to adopt this first, it helps you find your highest good. And you stop sabotaging yourself with defense mechanisms that don't work. You put your own needs first, and your body slowly and miraculously heals. When I found cannabis, I studied everything I could. I read everything on PubMed about all of the studies and how these work uh, as, as uh, preclinical studies and animal studies. You can't study it, it's schedule one uh, drug still, but that's about to fall. But I understood CBD and the other phytocannabinoids from a root cause physiological balance. And I was able to get rid of all of my conditions. I've been years without pills. And, but when I tried microdoses of THC, I softened my spirit. I accessed this knowledge, this intuition, this softness, this gratitude. And cannabis helped me build the resilience to live, leave the bonds of conditioning and the conditions that I used to be and live my best life. And the most exciting thing as a clinician is it's returning the art and science of medicine. You know, when did we stop talking to people about what is going to really keep them well, right? When the NIH issued the 2001 patent on cannabinoids as neuroprotectant antioxidants, then they, Paul Picard, the leading author, said modulating endocannabinoid activity may have therapeutic potential in almost all diseases. Those of endocrine, pain, skin, inflammatory, neurodegenerative, cancer, cardiovascular, liver, gastrointestinal, and psychiatric. We work with people across the paradigm of all of these medicines, I mean, all of these illnesses today. And a lot of times, cannabinoids help when everything else fails. Modern medicines are available. Uh, cannabis is, uh, is, is literally, it, it's everywhere. In, in California, we have all of these uh, shops where you can buy all of these. But you know, people are making great medicines, people are selling medicines, but nobody's interpreting how to use them as therapeutic options, and that's what we do. So we tell people how to use those. You don't have to be so fearful of, of uh, THC because it's dose dependent. When you take a little CBD with THC, it softens the effects of that, so you don't even have to be impaired. And my job is to make sure that people can use small doses to have the efficacy and the benefits that they need in CB1 or CB2 activation during the day without being compromised. So, you know, in the era of COVID, we know that self-care is healthcare. <laughs> and, and healthcare is self-care, right? So if we can help women to practice stronger self-care, we now have these effective options that people just really need to know how to dial in and fine tune. Um, there are nurses. Uh, I'm the treasurer of the American Cannabis Nurses Association. There's 1,500 nurses behind me that want jobs, that want to do coaching. Uh, we're building those. I've written programs. I, I feel like Noah building an ark waiting for the rain because I've written programs on uh, how to use cannabinoids for cancer and autoimmune conditions and mental health and autism, epilepsy, all of these that people want to know how to use CBD as an option. So we have written the programs. And, you know, help me help others. You know, I left Anthem Blue Cross literally to change the paradigm of healthcare. This is my mission to, to really take conventional care and cannabis therapeutics and bring them together for patients and clinicians. And so, uh, you know, I'm really excited because uh, Sherry, my, my VP of nursing, uh, brought the, 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 the deal high science to me. Uh, they needed money to fund it, and then I'm now uh, tucking holistic caring into CANM, which is a global LP in Australia. Uh, so we've got farms in Australia, Jamaica, Canada, uh, and we're taking the holistic caring educational programs to educate clinicians worldwide on how to add this to their therapeutic options for patients. 
Uh, and so we're going to portray all of this in high science, talking about how cannabis patients have become cannabis clinicians and now are taking this to heal the world with the past and the present coming back in, tying in the Jamaican lore, and we're going to be doing this on Netflix. So we just signed for five seasons. We're going to be moving <laughs> This fall, you'll be able to see us, and so uh, please join the network at holisticcaring.com. Spread this news. Uh, I have affiliate program sales if you ever want to help uh, share this with your clients. Uh, but do please help me change the paradigm of healthcare, and God bless you all. It's been an honor. <laughs>